Welcome back or welcome if you're just joining us. It's the France 24 debate. 75 days to go till the first round of the French presidential election. The front runner, uh, the man who had been the front runner till two weeks ago, François Fillon, um, hitting the reset button in his own way on Monday with a big press conference where he apologized uh, for misreading uh, the public's mood when it came to hiring his uh, wife and two of his children on his parliamentary payroll. However, saying there is no plan B and it's full steam ahead as he was the overwhelming winner of the primaries of the center right uh, for that election. With us to talk about it, Jacques Miao, a supporter of François Fillon, member of parliament for the Les Républicains par Party, Lorraine Bouno, executive director for the advocacy group Transparency International France, Bruno Cotres of the French Political Science Institute's uh, research arm Sevipof, who joins us from Sao Paulo, Brazil, and Robert Zaretsky at the University of Houston. Welcome back to all of you. Uh, the uh, Whether or not uh, François Fillon's uh, Monday uh, speech will fly uh, is also dependent on how they ex uh, take one part of his explanation, that 2007 interview granted to The Guardian, one that was filmed on videotape. I've never been actually his assistant or anything. No. Like that. Mm. <laughs> no, I don't deal with his communication. <laughs> Uh, that's a statement that uh, she reiterated to local press in Burgundy back in October, saying this was the first time she'd ever gotten involved in François Fillon's uh, politics uh, directly. Here's Fillon's line of defense. There's been talk of an old interview she gave in English, again taken out of context. She explained that she has never been my assistant. It's true. She has never been my subordinate. She's always been first and foremost my work partner and collaborator. Penelope has never wanted to be in the spotlight. She's always been discreet, refusing to speak for me like other politicians as wives. Today, that's being turned against her and against me. Bruno Cotres, how did François Fillon do? Uh, I would make a distinction between uh, the, the, I would say, the, the performance and what he said. Broadly speaking, the performance is, is, is okay. He did it well on purely formal side. Okay, it was, it was uh, very sharp and he has shown that he was strong, these kind of things. And probably he did a lot of preparation for that interview. Uh, but then you have what he said exactly. And what, what he's saying exactly is that uh, you can get uh, salary on public fund, if you are extremely discreet, if you never show up at your work, if you can only prove what you have done. So how can François Fillon then will explain to the French voters that public sector should work 39, page 37? How can you do so? So it's basically the big problem of the story. It is not really if it is true or not, we maybe never know. But it is the gap. But, but, uh, but Bruno, uh, now it's about now it's about vote getting, and uh, the story of the man who stands by his wife is that going to carry the day? Oh yes, it's the basic uh, storytelling of, of that, which is uh, I'm I'm working with my wife for a while. Everything that I did is thanks to the devotion of my wife, and like that. So it is purely storytelling. Uh, I would say that many, the, the many French voters do not really care about that. They just want to know if uh, they have used the taxpayer money in a good sense or in not a good sense. But obviously, there, there was a very good storytelling in the conference of François Fillon, and the, the, the show was quite good. Bruno, you, you, you were on a past show where we talked about how um after Nicolas Sarkozy and François Hollande, the, the French are pining for a president who looks presidential. Did Fillon seem presidential? Yes, that was a big point of François Fillon during the primary. The reason why probably that he won the primary was that he was looking very presidential, very executive person, having the profile for the, for the job. And, uh, and it is precisely that what, which is going to be extremely interesting to follow in the coming days. Do the French voters finally 
uh, say that François Fillon has still the profile that he can still be a president, or on the contrary, the damage to the image, the public image of François Hollande, of François Fillon, is it so hard already? Is it so big already that it's over? We, we will see that very soon. Robert Zaretsky, are you surprised at the way this is playing out? Well, being an American, um, I think of two American instances that help situate what Fillon did on Monday. The first is 1952, when Richard Nixon gave his famous checker speech. Um, he was suspected um, of benefiting from um, a slush fund that supporters had provided him back in 51, 52. And he gave this pivotal speech on American television in 52, in which he um, played on the same emotional registers that Fionn did, that um, he stood by his wife, that he loved his wife, that his wife wore a good, a good coat made of Republican cloth and not a mink coat. Um, and he managed to persuade enough Republican voters, and more importantly, Dwight Eisenhower, to keep him on the ticket in 1952. The other um, historical uh, context that this reminds me of is what's taking place right now with the Trump presidency. What I found fascinating in Fionn's uh, press conference the other day is that it had certain Trumpian elements. Um, he has transformed the media into an opposition party, um, a party that cannot be trusted to tell the truth. Um, he wasn't very far from saying the failing French media. Um, he, in fact, he sort of did that with Mediapart when he took um, the reporter for Mediapart um, um, and made the point that she was part of an organization that uh, was in tax arrears. Um, he also, like Trump, was able to m manipulate the, uh, uh, the press conference. There were more than 200 reporters there, which meant that the reporters could not or would not follow up one another's questions. And so important areas were left untouched during that press conference. There's a yet another Trumpian element um, that this is all in the family. Um, and for an American, there is something unfortunately deja vu about all of this. Deja vu. Deja vu. Deja vu. For uh, over all of this, yeah, he 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 chastised the media, saying it was the worst witch hunt uh, in modern French political history, and that it was even undermining democracy. He hinted at one right. Point. I, I think and that in the fact. Donald Trump here in the United States. One last thing that strikes me as very Trumpian is, in fact, his political program. Um, he's going, he promises to do the very same thing to the French state that Trump and his enablers are now doing to the American state. Um, unfortunately, the consequences are catastrophic or will be here. Um, and I don't know if the French no, have no, truly. No, 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 no. You're talking about the slashing of jobs. But let me ask you no, about no. the communications. On the question of communication, it's very clear that is, has been a kind of, let's say, uh, Fillon bashing every day. When you listen to one of the major, you know, non-stop radio, uh, I think that, in fact, uh, I think that if you count the number of times they've spoke of Fillon, of his difficulties, etc., it has been a genuine Fillon bashing, and that you cannot ignore. It's not being gratuitous. No, 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 I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry. You know, it's too much is too much. And I would say, I would say very clearly, I would say very clearly that when you, I just give you an example. You know, uh, yesterday in uh, uh, Le Monde, not to quote it, you know, we found the minutes that uh, the uh, lawyers and Fillon himself gave to the judge, to the, to the prosecutors. And of course, Fillon did not have all those minutes, and we found them in the press. And if you don't believe that it is a genuine conspiracy, then I'm fed up. I tell you frankly. So it goes too much. And this is democracy which is undermined by that. But because at the end, you know, this is, you are going to bring maybe Madame Le Pen to power. And this is very dangerous. Uh, Laurent, well, Madame Le Pen has become the Godwin point for people on the right in France, for the, for the Republicain, that if we're not careful, if we don't support Fillon, then we're going to open the path no, to... No, no, but Fillon is not Trump, please. 
Right, let, I'm let me, very let me, sorry let me. that you're fed up and that you believe this is a conspiracy. But this in is fact, a conspiracy. Yes, yes, offer, this is this is offer it. One evidence. Evidence. Maybe uh, on a more encouraging note, our positive message uh, about his press conference, what we can say without judging on, on the, the reasons that he's uh, putting forward, is that for the first time we have topics that used to be considered as very technical, uh, non-interesting by the media or by uh, generally speaking, such uh, as. like such as the use of public funding by, by MP such as the status of uh, collaborators at the parliament. Uh, so subjects so, that, were, that were really before Boulot, that. Let me ask you this then. Uh, the candidates have been asked to submit, uh, they, they have to do it by March the 17th, mm -hmm. uh, their statement uh, regarding their own personal earnings. It's the first time it's happening in a, in a French presidential election. The only one so far who hasn't responded to questions is Marine Le Pen. And she's under investigation for underreporting how much uh, she has in, in personal personal wealth. Again, why isn't why doesn't this stick to her? Uh, in what sense? What why isn't this a bigger scandal for her? And and yet it is when it's someone else. I think it's a big scandal for her, and I think that what she's, uh, what what is happening right now at the European Parliament, for example, the money that she has to give back because she was employing people uh, to work for the he, her own party instead of working for the institute for the European institution. Uh, this has been reported in the media, uh, and this has been subject to to media coverage. Uh, but to it's go a back, similar, it's a, it's a similar question as as that of in her case she actually did something wrong because it's illegal at the European exactly. Parliament. Exactly. It's not in France. And yet she's not getting the same treatment as François Fillon over this. She is, but mm -hmm. it's just uh, not the same legal system in at the European Union and in France. But you go back on like how suddenly we have topics that used to be considered as too technical or too in uninteresting for public mm -hmm. debates. It's a good thing what we're seeing. And what we're seeing as well is that citizens can actually finally um, um, impose a new framework in which um, our public decision makers, our elected officials, have to be accountable and they have to be, uh, they have to follow principles such as integrity, truth, accountability and transparency. And this is, this is, is a proof of a change of culture that we're seeing in France. And I'm sure that in a couple of years, uh, what we're seeing right now, so MPs being able to hire their wives or or their kids is not going to be the case in a couple of years in First France. All, and we're going to follow the model of Germany or European Union. We in are sense. not going to follow any other case. I can tell you one thing, because what is at stake, this is the liberty of an MP to work freely. And what you say is very dangerous, I tell you frankly, because what you want is striptease. It's no more accountability, as you said. You see, every time I'll do something, I will say, but somebody will say, why is it that you had dinner with this man? Why is it that you have this kind of shirt? Why is it do you have this undercoat on you? Have, you? have you shares with this company or so? So what you are professing, you know what it is? Totalitarians. Yes. This is very dangerous. This is very dangerous. And you are an enemy of democracy because the first liberty of an MP is the liberty of the citizens. And I am accountable to my citizens by the vote, not a question of techniques, not a question of, you know, those so-called, uh, you know, lobbies who will accuse me of anything. This is very dangerous what you are going to say. Yeah, it's a bit, it's going overboard to, to accuse no, somebody no, of being no, no, an sorry. enemy of democracy. We are, we, this is not more about. democracy. This is no more democracy. You know, Michel Field, who is a left uh, journalist, said to me that transparency is the beginning of total absurdity. This kind of Bolshevik, this is a, a Bolshevik approach. Then you will say, you have to say, why is it that you s did so? Why is it you had this dinner with this man, etc.? We are back to the French Revolution, where you had, you know, the tricoteuse during, the, you know, the National Assembly, and they were accusing the guys that, and, and they said, this, this, this. This is very well, dangerous. Bruno, Bruno, Bruno Cotres, uh, is there such a thing as too much transparency? No. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell something to Jacques Millard. Uh, when you do a contract with the EU, 
as a researcher that EU gives you money, on today you have to justify any expenditure by, one by one. In but the I am very, an MP. I am hand. not a researcher, young then, man. Then, sorry, sorry, sorry. Then, 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 you have the point that precisely you are an MP. As an MP, you could legislate, for instance, on conflict of interest. So you could perfectly at the same time ask the French to respect a law about fighting against uh, conflict of interest and yourself being engaged in conflict of interest. Rubbish. It cannot continue like that. I, uh, I say that, I say that to my finish. conflict of interest yeah. to the uh, uh, freedom of authority. Yeah. I do it. I am, I am in charge in Sciences Po of an annual study which is called the Political Trust Barometer in France. We just published the last wave two weeks ago. Wave after wave, we can see the situation which is getting worse and worse and worse in the way that French citizens trust on you, the politicians. 75% of Don't worry, the French this is the same the for you. Don't rest. worry, this is the frame for you. No, for, not for no, academic no, no, research. No, 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 no. They just don't trust on you and if nothing happened in that country with a big, 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 big reform and a big change in the mentality of you, the politicians, then we will have a major democratic accident in that country, guaranteed. But Bruno, Bruno, Cotres, Bruno Cotres, let me ask you, because you've also done studies that show that the French are more inclined to go with a leader who has illiberal tendencies or at least flouts the law from time to time. Yes, because in that messy situation that we are, it's true that uh, there is a kind of a little return to a vertical power. French want a very good and very effective executive who is doing the job to run the country. But at the same time, they want their politicians to be much more empathetic to their situation, to be less self-interested and to be less, less, less uh, talking just to themselves. The exercise that François Fillon did on, on, on Monday, on the formal side, was, was okay. But it was basically speaking, I excuse myself. Okay, but I excuse myself with myself. And, I, I, uh, and what, what, what was said about the media and the conspiracy, all of that we know is not true. Even probably François Fillon knows that it is not true. Right. That the media have a conspiracy against a candidate to the presidential election. How can we trust that? How can we trust that? They do their job. They just do their job. On the hashtag F24 debate, a lot of people are talking conspiracy. Uh, one viewer saying Macron and Fillon are getting the Podesta treatment. Must be the Russians. All together now, stop saying Le Pen can't win. Now, we've seen Russian-backed news outlets start to target not François Fillon, but Emmanuel Macron, the former economy minister who's running as an independent and who's polling better than Fillon right now about his finances, about his past as a banker, even claims that uh, there's some big scoop in email exchanges with Hillary Clinton. The 39-year-old former economy minister taking the bull by the horns at a Monday rally unprompted. He denied that he was having a homosexual double life with the president of Radio France behind the back of his wife, Brigitte. Yeah, we don't. For those who want to spread rumors that I'm deceitful, that I have hidden lives and what have you, not only is it unpleasant for my wife Brigitte, but also, since she shares my life from morning to night, she's wondering how I could physically do it. <laughs> and fortunately, I've never paid her for it. Uh, Jacques Mia, you, there, there has been a lot of trolling of Emmanuel Macron that we've seen over the past week. Uh, Russian uh, news outlets that have been uh, throwing all kinds of claims at him. No, I, I, I'm not going to judge that because I don't know. And mm. I'm not going to try to accuse him of anything. And his sexual wife, I don't care, you know. This is not my business. But I would like to come back on the question of uh, conflict of interest by Bruno. When we sign and we declare each item of interest, you know, the kind of shares, 
the kind of interest in our companies, etc. So the, 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 this question of conflict of interest is solved now in France. So there is no problem on that. So when he says, as a, a European researcher, I have to say what kind of interest I have, I mean, sorry, we do that. We do and that. And François Fillon, by the way, backing the, the, the new law that uh, stops yeah, MPs yes. from I, backing, I, that stops said, MPs from I also being mayors. Is, I said this is new inquisition, you know, because I think it goes too far. Because so I you have disagree to say, with Fillon on this? Oh, I don't care. You know, it doesn't really matter. I'm not a clone. You see, I, I protest and I say what I want. But the point is, is this question of conflict interest is solved. So don't forget it about it. And what about Macron? Then he will. Have, there is one question with Macron: is that uh, sometime in, and this is what he publishes, there is some lack of uh, money somewhere. All right, campaign finances will will will, will once again uh, haunt him as the claim on the on the part of the right. Uh, I want to thank our panel, Lauren Bounot. I want to thank Jacques Millard. I want to thank as well Robert Zaretsky for joining us from the University of Houston and Bruno Cotres from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Stay and Bruno, us. when you come to Paris, which he, it's also please come and see me. All right, <laughs> it's okay. to, it's time now for Media Watch. And we say hello to uh, James Creedon. Hi, Francois. So, reactions to the latest uh, uh, revelation by the Canal Enchaîné. You were uh, talking about it a little earlier, just to look at some of the headlines. Uh, for the Huffington Post French edition, they have this lovely expression, jamais deux sans trois. Sans trois. This Never is about her severance pay, 45,000 euros. Right. Never two without three. In other words, here's another. Uh, layer on this, uh, I suppose, never-ending, uh, you know, cake of revelations. That's not a bizarre way of putting it, but anyway, there you go. You get the picture. Uh, this is uh, Christophe <laughs> Greber uh, talking about uh, Penelope Gate, saying the already steep bill uh, that the taxpayer uh, had to pay has now just got even steeper. In other words, I suppose the fact that she was employed as uh, a parliamentary assistant that was taxpayers' money, and now we're learning of severance pay, which means that it was. Uh, higher still, I guess, in terms of the overall figure. Now, according to one reading of the revelations in the Canal Enchaîné tomorrow, uh, investigators now have enough elements uh, gathered together to uh, pursue this through the courts. And of course, Francois, if this is the case, Francois Fillon is probably going to have to stand down. He himself has said that uh, if he if is... If he was indicted, he If would he's stand. indicted, he, he'll stand down. So whether or not that is the case, uh, we'll have to wait and see. Of course, François Fillon has also been very critical of the fact that so much information has been leaking out uh, from this investigation to uh, journalists. Now, on social media, François Fillon has been, uh, I suppose, showing that he is continuing with his campaign. That was a message he wanted to provide Has he been tweeting yesterday. much? He's been tweeting a little bit. He's been... Uh, his people have also been using Facebook uh, since this afternoon's revelation. Here on his Facebook page, he's really just, I won't go into it, but he's talking about the details of his program. So in other words, he's almost ignoring Because earlier in our discussion, here's what happened. Robert Zaretsky said that there were Trumpian elements in the way he uh, said that the press was the opposition right. and sort of talking over their heads right. directly to the people. Yeah. When you look at his Facebook page, when you look at his Twitter feed, is he, is he Trumpian in his tone? I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go that far. I think yesterday at the press conference there were definitely echoes of of, of uh, criticizing the media, uh, maybe Trump light, Trump style light. But today, not so much of that. What we're seeing really is François Fillon trying to put the best his best foot forward and show that he's continuing with his campaign. Nonetheless, he's saying that there are no new elements in this revelation, and he is pictured here today with who was I suppose. Uh, 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 put forward as one of the most likely Plan B replacement candidates. Yeah, the That's former finance France, minister. Yeah. François Baron. So uh, he's been, the picture speaks a thousand words. That was put up on his Facebook page just a little while ago. Here's his Twitter account. And uh, his uh, community manager, or whoever is tweeting on his behalf, is essentially uh, showing the massive support that was uh, awaiting him when he was on uh, campaigning today in the, in, this, in the town of Trois. Uh, so quotes are being put up online, such as, uh, good luck, uh, go for Forward, we are, everybody is with you, etc., etc. Now, it, it depends on where you focus the camera, I suppose, uh, because uh, all, all journalists who were there picked up on other little moments. For example, uh, somebody shouting, you crook, 
at Francois Fillon as he arrived uh, at uh, one particular site in the Aube area. Another uh, uh, showing the another tweet here showing that there were uh, far left. Uh, activists for the Front de Gauche party, uh, also present uh, for François Fillon's visit, saying, we also want 45,000 uh, euros as severance pay like uh, Penelope Fillon. So I suppose you, you can expect that from uh, far left uh, uh, um, supporters that they would pick up on these issues and use it against François Fillon. François Fillon was also booed by one particular individual saying uh, pay back what you owe and there was even a, some foul language included there which I, I won't show. So uh, uh, despite François Fillon trying to put the best foot forward on social media mm. and show that there is a lot of support for his campaign, there are also a lot of elements online showing that people are using this latest revelation against him and it's it's certainly not uh, uh, good now, news. Just one final question for you, sure. James. Uh, France is not the United States. Right. Uh, we did a little tally of uh, who's on Twitter, how many Twitter followers they have. I don't know if that's what that represents, because right. at the end of the day, how important it is in France. Uh, Benoit Hamon, socialist, 317,000. François Fillon, 415,000. Emmanuel Macron, 472,000. Mélenchon, the far left mm. candidate, 956,000 mm. Twitter followers. And Marine Le Pen, 1.2 million. Mm. What does that tell you? Well, I guess uh, it shows that uh, two very um, established figures in French politics, uh, Mélenchon and Marine Le Pen, who've been around for decades, uh, unsurprisingly, there is more interest perhaps in, in their personalities. Mélenchon, despite... They the have fact, a brand. They have a brand and they have a, a, a long established presence in French politics. We'll have to wait and see whether it helps in terms of votes. All right, that's another story. Indeed. Thanks for that, James Creed. And I want to thank our panel. I want to thank you for joining us here in the France 24.